brothers and sisters in Christ, let me invite you to please stand for the reception of the body. Let us receive the body of the late Irvin Barrow for burial. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised. In his great mercy by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, he gave us new birth into a living hope. The hope of an inheritance reserved in heaven, which nothing can destroy or spoil or wither. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, says the Lord. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. We would not have you ignorant brothers and sisters about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we pray to Almighty God we say, eternal God, our heavenly Father, you love us with an everlasting love and can turn the shadow of death into the light of a new dawn. Help us now to wait upon you with reverent and submissive hearts. In the silence of this hour, speak to us of eternal things that with patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and hold fast the blessed hope of eternal life, which you have given us in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with the order, and you remain standing as we join our voices in singing the hymn, And Can It Be? that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood. Good afternoon, everyone. This song is in your program. And can it be that I should gain an interest Thank you. 
through Christ my own. We move into the tributes at this time. We would first have a pan item by Brother Harrison McMillan, followed by a tribute by Pastor Phil Isaac, not picking up his face as yet. Then we would have another by relative cousin Gart Benjamin, and then an instrumental by Mitchell Bruce, followed by a song by Delise Nancy's also cousin. So we start with the pan item by Brother Harrison McBillan. Thank you. 
Now we're not seeing Pastor Phil Isaac as yet. Cousin Gart Benjamin is here. Gart is here, right? Gart will come and bring his tribute, followed by an instrumental by Mitchell Bruce. Good afternoon, church. My name is Gart Benjamin. I am here to bring tributes on behalf of the Benjamin family. I am the oldest of the Benjamin siblings to my parents, predeceased Ruth Van Benjamin and Esme Edwards Benjamin, <laughs> who was the aunt of deceased Irvin Barrow. Irvin Barrow was our cousin. And in his earlier life, shared the same home with my mom at Golden Grove Road in Canaan. During his time of illness, as a family, we were called to assist with his care. By his only surviving sibling, Altia Edwards, who resided in the US. It was challenging at times, but we were committed and stuck to the task. There was a period when his health seemed to be dwindling, and I remembered leading him to the sinner's prayer as I was concerned about his salvation. There were times when called upon to take his medication, he would refuse and say, he's not getting better, so it makes no sense. It seemed like he was prepared to die. In response, I would often quote Hebrews 9.27, which says, It is appointed unto man once to die, but after that is the judgment. Folks, there is life after death, but it boils down to choice. The good book says, It's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There's room at the cross for you and me. Though a million have come, there's still room for one. Let's put our trust in God, the Good Shepherd. He will have the 99, he will leave the 99 and still go after that one that was lost. In 1 Thessalonians 4.13 it says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed, but those who sleep in debt, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. To Altia and the rest of the family, I say, stand strong. Look to Jesus, for his strength is made perfect. 
to Nigel, which I would have spent the last couple of months with Ken for his father. I want to say commendably you did well. I said to my siblings today, if ever I get sick, I want Nigel to care for me. I saw you cared for your dad like he was your very all. Even the day before he passed, you was there at the hospital when you shaved him. So I don't think the funeral home had any work to do today. Your work for your dad will never, never go without recognition. God will bless you, sir. As I lay me down, heaven hear me now. I'm lost without a cause after giving it my all. Winter storms have come and darken my cloud. I'm lost without a cause After giving it my all I look to you I look to you After all my strength is gone In you I can be strong I look to you And when melodies are gone, in you I hear a song, I look to you. Thank you. Good afternoon to the congregation. It is indeed a pleasure to stand here this afternoon to speak about Oven Bible. I want to say before I go further, thanks to Miss Altia is the name and Nigel, because I know none of the family. I know Barrow and Andre's son. And when I heard of his death, I said, somehow, somewhere, I have to be here to give a tribute. Because in 1968, when Bokunier Steel Orchestra was just one year old, we were going to a festival, and up steps Barrow. I didn't know who he was, and came into the band, and Campus Authority on a six set base. Those of you who know about Pan. And his mark is indelible because only I played about six months and I went to Trinidad after. I didn't see Barrow. And that competition that we went, it stayed with me all my life. And I just want to say how oh, great the work. I will play a piece on the keyboard in tribute to Barrow. I hope the family gets started.
Very refreshing. We thank you so much, Mr. Mitchell, Bruce. Delis, you're going to sing your own song now. You did one for Uncle God. <laughs> okay. A pleasant good day to everyone. I am Cousins Irvin's unofficial granddaughter. And I say that because um, when he, when my mommy couldn't do, when he would ask her to do stuff and she was unable to do it, I would have to do it. And there was one day in particular, we went to buy fish. And when we got by the fish stall, the young men there, they say, Gramps, you have a nice granddaughter there, boy. <laughs> he said, not my granddaughter. You better leave she alone. You have to go through me before you get to she. So that's why I say unofficial. I am Cousins Irvin's granddaughter. Um, I'll be singing How Great Thou Art. Feel free to sing along.
Yes, she deserved that applause and the message of how great God is even in the face of death. He gives us an opportunity to rejoice knowing that this is the gateway into everlasting life. So Lord, we bless you and we are grateful that we can sing of your greatness even at this time. We will continue with the God be the glory and blessed assurance as the offertory is being received. So the baskets will be coming around. So feel free to sit and sing. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So love be the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sins, and opened the life's gate that all may go in. Clap your hands. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. of blood to every believer the promise of God the vilest offender who truly believes that moment of Jesus a pardon received praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth hear his voice Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done, great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoice. The sun, but purer and higher and greater will be. Oh, wonderful transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let's hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord.
Right, we give God thanks for the gifts that you have given. Let us pray. Lord God, we bless you. We bless you for the goodness and mercy that has followed our loved one, even though he is not in the breath as it is now. For the breath has returned to you, dear God. We still thank you for goodness and mercy that followed him all the days of his life. Father God, we have come this evening in celebration. And we have brought gifts of offering there, God, because we know that giving is a part of living. Receive these gifts, O God, and may they be blessed and used for continued work in the spreading of your gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. And we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, and we say, Amen. Amen. Be seated, and I invite the readers, nephew Tula and niece Dorinda, will come and share with us in the ministry of God's word. Tula would share from scripture reading, 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 to 11, and Dorinda would do John 14, 1 to 6, and verse 27. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. All protocols observed. Scripture reading is from 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 to 11. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for, and helmet the hope of salvation. For God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. Word of the Lord and thanks be to God. Good afternoon, everyone. Now I'll ask you please to stand for the, read the reading of the gospel, which is taken from John 14, verse 1 to 6 and 27. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Be seated as we receive another opportunity here to hear the life lived by our departed brother. Sh Sheila, who is relative, cousin, will share with us at the eulogy. Thank you. Pleasant good afternoon, church. And let me set the record straight. I am senior to God.
Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we can rejoice and be glad in it. Today I'm standing in for Andre. He was supposed to be doing this, but he's not as strong as he's supposed to be right now. Irving was 80 years of age. He lived in the village of Buku Tobago for over 47 years. He hailed from the village of Lescato a few years before that. Irving was the husband of the now deceased Roslyn Barrow and the father of three boys, Andre, Nigel, and Kofi deceased. In his younger days, he was a welder. He was also an avid pan man. And just like other youths at his time, he was very irresistible to the ladies. A swanky dresser, a dapper dan. He also invented bling. Even his cars had swag. Irving dabbled a liquor in singing Calypso in the early 80s. He went by the sobriquet Marcus de Sade. Marquis de Sade. One of his biggest songs was called A Yankee Chick. If I'm not mistaken, that Calypso song took him into the competition finals. Despite placing seventh, he felt good about his performance. <laughs> Irving was a farmer in every sense of the word. With his 15 plus head of cattle situated at Orange Hill area, he had a name for each one of them. From the first cow, Lisa, Junie, Dessa, Mandela, Zoro, and that list went on for years. He loved his cows, tending to their every need twice a day, twice every day without fail. A passion he would later close the curtain of his on in his older years. Irving also dabble, loved to dabble in being a TV electrician. He would spend hours till late into the night troubleshooting, replacing, and welding, and doing whatever it is electricians do to get favor results. He loved it. In many ways, Irving was self-taught. A man of many ambitions, but he was never without the support of his loving wife always there with him, comforting him with words of encouragement. But most of all, Irvin was a dedicated father. He played a pivotal role in shaping the lives of his two sons via his Roslyn, also known as Zinger, to some. He, however, was a strict no nonsense, father and husband. This would sometimes lead to him being a difficult person to get along with. But it but if you took the time to really get to know him, you couldn't help but love him. Irving to his sons was always doing something, never a lazy person. Let's just say he made haste while the sun was shining. As a young man, he landed a job at NBN 610 Radio, where he pursued a career as a radio disc jockey, radio operator. Together with his colleagues, Mr. Hilson Phillips, deceased, and the Honorable Orville London, they would bring to the population an and in extension, those in Trinidad, 
the latest happenings in Tobago. An evening program delivered in the most professional of manner. Irving was a perfectionist, and the areas where he may have fallen short just know that he tried his best. There will be many that say he was difficult to deal with, but in his defense, I would say he had his own way of doing things. Sometimes aggressive, but with no malice behind it. Irving lived a pretty decent and full life. A God-fearing man, an honest man. In his latter days, he was overtaken with medical issues. He often said, if it wasn't for my close relatives and friends, my life would be a living hell. He will forever be grateful for all who assisted him in this regard. To Nigel, his second son, he will also forever be grateful for all that you were able to do for him in his last days on this earth. Now that Irving has crossed over from the land of the living to the afterlife, fear not, for there are enough loved ones on the other side to greet him and welcome him. He isn't alone. I hope that all those who love him can draw some comfort from knowing that he will be loved on the other side by those who went before him. May his soul rest in peace. Amen, Amen and thank you, Sister Sheila, for enlightening us, our memories, with who Brother Barrow was as he sojourned here on earth Preceding Reverend Belinda coming to bring the message, we'd have ministry from the worship team, so they would come forward now, and after them, Reverend Belinda would share with us God's word of comfort. We would like you to stand as we sing some choruses, please. And let's make a joyful noise. You are free, you are free to clap your hands and shake a leg and stuff, okay? Okay. The song says, hear my cry, O God. So we're going to sing that one first, and then we're going to sing some others. Hear my cry, O Lord, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading. 
concentrate in my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading, I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. The song says, To go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Goodbye, world, goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasure. My mind go God's way. Oh, I made up my mind. I made up my mind to go God's way. My Jesus, look. My Jesus, look where you brought me from. Look where you brought me from. I was out in the world. Doing as I please, look where you brought me from. Oh, look, look where you brought me from. Look where you brought me from. I was out in the world, doing as I please. Look where you brought me from. Look where you brought me, look where you brought me from. Look where you brought me from. I was out in the world doing as I please. Look where you brought me from. Reverend right, Belinda, just give me a minute to convey condolences from the Infinity Home. Congregation, be seated. Sorry. Yeah, from the Infinity Home and Miss Pulchin manager of that home, Mr. Barrow, our deceased loved one, did spend a short time there, and he was loved and cared for just as they would do with all the residents. I recall when I saw him there, I did not recognize him. I wasn't sure. I do ministry at the home, and I don't like just going to ask persons who they are, because that's not my reason for being there. But after hearing me singing, he recognized my voice, being a part of the Methodist family at Scarborough, and he called me over and asked me who I am, and then he said we were able to reacquaint ourselves with who both of us were speaking with. 
right? He was quite pleasant to minister to. Miss Chin would ensure that I go to him as he shared a room different or separated from the other residents. She would ensure that I go to him and spend some time singing and encouraging him. And he did get that opportunity to do so. So we pray for the bereaved family and receive condolences from the Infinity Home for the Elderly and the manager, Ms. Pulchin. I think I see Sushana here, one of the workers, yes. Blessed afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Amen. Indeed, this is a moment of grief. But I remind us that the scripture says, uh, the God of all comfort, he will comfort us in all, not some, but all our troubles. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's just pause for a little bit in this place. And I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Worship team, just join me right now if you're here. Oh, yes. Lift your hands where you are. We declare he has done great things for me. He has done great things. We bless the Lord. He has done great things. Oh, we bless the Lord. He has done great things. Bless him. Bless the Lord. 
hand next to you. Hold the person's hand next to you. Squeeze the hand and we declare, He has done great things for me. Hey. He has done great things. He's mending brokenness. say hallelujah somebody say praise the Lord go and worship him in this place he is worthy of worship he is worthy of glory he is worthy of honor he is worthy to be magnified he is worthy to be lifted up he is God all by himself nothing can separate us from the love of God hallelujah not even death can the presence of God is in this place and he deserves the glory he deserves the honor he deserves Somebody shout Jesus. He is enough in this place. Hallelujah. We bless his holy name. We bless his holy name. We bless his holy name, God. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, God. There absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so we thank you, God, that in your presence there is strength, there is peace, there is comfort, there is the fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My praise team is going too far from me, you know. Don't go too far from me, yeah? Amen. Amen. As I said, it's a time of grief, but it is also a time of connection with each other. Because there are persons you haven't seen for a long time. Amen? And so it is my resolve not to be lengthy this afternoon. Amen? Amen. And on behalf of the, of the Book of Moravian Church, where he would have worshipped some time back, we do extend our condolences to the family. Yes? And even though it is under sad circumstances, it is good to see my classmate, Andre. God bless you. God bless you. And so I want to use the opportunity to remind us that funerals bring us into a dimension of God's goodness. Are, are you there with me so far? And the goodness speaks to his kindness. God's goodness speaks to his tolerance. God's goodness speaks to his patience towards us. Amen? Amen. So we, we get excited when we sing the song, God is good. Yes? Or the song that says, his goodness is following me. Am I correct? Yes? And 
certainly there is an excitement within the song. But I want us to consider the dimension that God is calling us to think about. That when we speak about God's goodness, we are speaking about God's kindness. We are speaking about God's patience. We are speaking about God's long-suffering. We are speaking about God. God's uh, tolerating us. Are you there with me? And so the intention of God's goodness is to hear his word again. And in hearing his word again, it leads us to repentance. Romans 2 verse 4 says that the goodness of God, it must lead us to repentance. Now, like Brother Barrow, we are going to follow him someday. We must also face death. Hebrews 9, 27 tells us, it is appointed, it is fixed, once to die and then the judgment. But Paul warns us, do not take God's goodness for granted. Understand, because death is an appointment, we can't push it back. We can't, could I ask us please, if there's any water right now? Oldest cousin? Hello? Save the serving of the water, please, thanks. Especially during the message, it could be distracting, yeah? And so because death is fixed, because it is appointed, we can't bribe death. We can't tell death come back next week or next year or next 10 years. Not even enough back pay could push back death. No raise could push back death. Once God says this is the time, it is the time. So I want us to understand that God is allowing us to experience his goodness that we may come to the place where we repent. Hear what God says. In Ecclesiastes 33 verse 11. He says, as surely as I live, declares a sovereign God, I take no pleasure in the death of the unrepentant. God's goodness is so awesome that he takes no pleasure in those who fail to repent. Watch this. So not because you're alive, you're good. It is a divine opportunity, come on, for you to get it right with God. Are you there with me, somebody? It is a chance for you to search your life and your living. And perhaps you are saying to yourself, I've, I've heard this many times, and there are persons who would argue, from the time they were children, they heard of Christ's return, and he ain't come back yet. And I often say to people, God's return is either for us or for the world. Are you there with me, church? So understand this. Our presence in this place is God's goodness. Somebody say amen. amen. Hearing the word now is God's goodness. Somebody say praise the Lord. When we hear the word of God and we reject the word of God, the scripture says that we shall be cut off without remedy. There is no repentance after the grave. So while we are young, and I'm, I'm just admiring these young people in front of me here, while we are alive, while we are in the land of the living, while we are still able to inhale and exhale, it is not for us 
just do what we want and live how we want, but it's for us to recognize and embrace. It is God saying to us, I am being good to you. And my goodness towards you is for you to repent. So you say, Rev, what it means to repent, and I'm glad you asked. But to repent is to change your mind about sin and serve the living God. To repent is to change your mind and serve the living God. And it begins in the mind because your mind affects how you feel and how you feel affects how you behave. So repenting is changing your mind and serving the living God. Romans 9, 9 to 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth of confession is made unto salvation. So I repeat, repentance is a mind change. So you can serve the living God. So it says, before repentance, we are serving ourselves. We are serving flesh, the old nature. And we even serve in Satan. Are you there with me, somebody? So repentance calls for us to think differently. But the thinking differently is not how what we want to think. It's what God's word says. And in changing how we think, then now our service is unto God. I want to please God. I want to do what God says. Hence, to understand this, and I'm wrapping up, I won't be long, I said to you. Repentance is not merely serving God. Repentance is serving God because in serving God, this is our duty. In serving God, this is our destiny. In serving God, this is our life. King Solomon said, at the end of his, of, of, of his writing, he said, now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Here is the end of the matter. He says, fear God. Keep his commandments. And to fear God is to be afraid of God, yes. It's the fear though where we run towards God because we want to live a life pleasing to God. Are you there with me? And he says to us, we have to fear God, respect God, honor God, treat him with reverence because he is God all by himself. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. Come on. He deserves our attention. He deserves our adoration. He is God. Yes. Solomon says, fear God. And then he says, follow or keep the commandments. To keep is to guard it, is to protect it, is to allow it, as scripture says, to let it dwell in you richly. You know when you get an expensive gift, you don't put the gift in the pig pen, do you? Anybody here does that? Talk to me now, please. Because it is so precious to you. And I'm sure if you want to ask Andrea's children, when you get something good, you kind of hide it away, right? Yeah? Because somebody will come and want to trouble it. Right? And you protect it. And God is saying to us, when it comes to his word, we ought to protect it. We ought to guard it. We ought to keep it inside of us. Talk to me as somebody. That when the troubles of life come, 
sometimes. Yes, I may cry some th- sometimes. Yes, I may feel alone sometimes. But watch this. Because I know what God's word says. Talk to me. I am not alone because he says I will never leave you. Not forsake you. And there is no situation that keeps God away from us. Talk to me, somebody. Nothing separates us from his love. That's the God we serve. Solomon says, it is the whole duty of man. It is man's all to fear God and to keep his commandments. And then he says, for God will bring every deed into judgment including every hidden thing, whether good or evil. So understand this. Even though Pastor can see you, God is seeing what you're doing. Hello. Hello. There are too many of us. We are in the Christian path, but yet, we are going somewhere to find help. I'm saying to you, the Bible says, All oh, my help comes from the Lord. Talk to me, which made the heaven and the earth. So, the help we need to go on, the help we need in this life, the help we need, it is the Almighty God. All oh, my help comes from Him. So, I ask us, what motivates us? To do what we do. Can we say everything we do is done because we fear God? What changes do we need to make that will help to line up our will with the will of God? We aren't alive by chance. We're alive because of the goodness of God. But like Paul, I warn us and encourage us, do not take the goodness of God for granted. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. That in this atmosphere of worship and in this atmosphere of praise, in this atmosphere of the fear of God, we recommit ourselves to you. Bless us with the grace not to take your goodness for granted. But to daily surrender our lives to you. To daily give of ourselves in service to you. I speak in this atmosphere, God, a, a shift in mindset. That God, this word will not return to you void but it will accomplish the purpose for which you sent it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I surrender all to you. Withholding nothing, I surrender all. I 
God, by your spirit, do what only your spirit is able to do, to draw men and women, boys and girls, unto you. Because God, you want none to perish, but for all to come to repentance. And so God, in the days to come, for the rest of our lives, may this word resonate in our hearts that daily we surrender all to you because a life outside of you is nothing but a life with Jesus is victory. And so God, we just surrender all to you even now. And we say, God, let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. We continue in prayer. Most holy and merciful God, the refuge and strength of those who put their trust in you, we thank you for the multitude no one can number whom you have received into your eternal joy. We praise you that you have forgiven them all their sins and that they dwell with you beyond evil and sorrow forever. We thank you also for all to whom amid the trial of this earthly life you give the faith to overcome the world who have peace in you and rejoice in hope of your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal God, before whose face the generations rise and pass away, we bless you and praise your name for all who have departed this life in faith, and especially for Irving Barrow, for all your kindness to him throughout his earthly life. We give you thanks. We thank you that for him, all sickness and sorrow are ended and that death itself is past. Almighty God, may we, inspired by the example of your saints, run with patience the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, so that when this earthly life is ended, we may be gathered with those whom we have loved in the kingdom of your glory, where there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh God, our Father, 
by whom we are led through the changes of time to the rest and blessedness of eternity. Be near us to comfort and uphold. Make us to know that your people are precious in your sight and that they live evermore with you. As we thank you for Irvin Barrow, whose life we shared, may we trust you at this time of passing. Oh God, give us your strength that we may take up our lives more bravely and seek to be more faithful in duty and more loving and helpful to others, following those who are no longer with us here on earth. And may we in our turn find in your great mercy the perfect and unending rest of God through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us We join in the Lord's prayer at this time. Our Father, who art what in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily, daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us commend Irvin Barrow, to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your power you gave life and in your love you have given us new life in Jesus Christ. We entrust Irvin to your merciful keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who died and rose again that we might enjoy eternal life. Please stand with me, with us. Let us lift our right hand. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon us, remain with us always, now and forevermore, and we shout in this place, amen, amen. and amen. amen, amen. As the body is recessed, we can do that chorus soon very soon. We are going to see the king, we know that, right?
destroyed, we possess a building provided by God, eternal and in heaven. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. All who have faith in me shall live, even though they die. No one who lives and has faith in me shall ever die. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Thanks be to God who gives the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We now commit the body to the ground. We have entrusted 
Irving Barrow to God's merciful keeping. And now we commit his body to the ground. Dust to dust. In short, that in hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died, was buried, and rose again. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue to pray. O oh, Father of all, we pray to you for those whom we love, but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let your light perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, working them the good purpose of your perfect will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously with all who mourn, that casting every care upon you, that they may know the consolation of your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, support us all the day long of this earthly life until the shadows lengthen and evening comes. The busy world is hushed, the fever of life over, and our work done. Then, O oh Lord, in your mercy, grant us and those we love safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at the last through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Rejoicing in the communion of saints, we thank you for all your servants of the children in the faith, the great cloud of witnesses by whom we are encompassed, who in every age have loved you in life and continued faithful unto death, especially those most dear to our hearts. Give us grace with them to follow you and bring us at the last to those things which I has not heard nor ear I have not seen nor ear heard, which you have prepared for them that love you. Amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Mr. DJ, you can play the music while